In this example, let's take a look at how not to model a parametric model with repeating geometry. Uh, so it's almost always preferable in any parametric software to pattern features rather than pattern, pattern uh, sketch elements. And so let's look at this sketch and let's see what some issues are. Uh, so I'm going to edit this sketch and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to display all constraints. So I, I click here to this, this to show all constraints and um, we can see that there's uh, a few constraints that need to be solved and the software would have to simultaneously uh, solve all of these uh, various constraints and um, obviously that would be a daunting task uh, to do uh, to solve all of those constraints at once and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on I'll, sh I'll show all degrees of freedom and we can see that most of the geometry in this sketch is if not all of the geometry is free to move someplace whenever you're creating a sketch you should fully define that sketch uh, create it in such a way that none of the geometry uh, is free to move and um, so uh, let's take a little deeper look at, at some of the geometry and uh, so I'll come on here come in here and I uh, I want to click on one of these arcs but uh, a poor choice was selected in making that red because I can't even tell that I click on it until I actually click on it and uh, notice there should be a tangent symbol here between this arc and this arc there is no tangent symbol um, there should be a tangent symbol between this arc and this arc there is no tangent symbol so this geometry isn't tangent not only isn't it tangent but if I drag one of these points notice that those points aren't coincident to each other and so that's the same way you know all the way around I'm going to undo that step and so the geometry isn't fully defined if we attempt to extrude this uh, in later versions of Inventor, it may extrude, but that doesn't make it right. The geometry is still poorly defined. Uh, I will uh, notice that it defaults to a surface body output rather than a solid body output. And if I click on solid body, um, the uh, sketch doctor pops up this red cross. So I'll click on the red cross and see what the sketch doctor has to say. And so I'll, I'll click on it and it tells me that it found an open loop in the sketch I'll say next and actually it did preview a location I hit that next too too quickly um, let me go back and do that again so I'll, I'll do do the extrude and I will uh, put it on solid I'll click the sketch doctor and it tells me you know found an open loop and so it's showing me remember that coincident constraint that I showed you that was missing it is showing me there are coincident constraints uh, missing there if I click display next problem so if I go all the way around this there are coincident constraints uh, missing all the way around the sketch and um, you know uh, coincident constraints missing uh, everywhere so uh, let's uh, look at a better way to do this. I'm going to go to uh, this file. And uh, first thing, let's go, uh, I've tied a spreadsheet into this file. And I'm going to uh, uh, edit that spreadsheet. And I have 24 teeth here. Uh, let's say that I want to change that to 30 teeth. And so I just uh, put in the number of teeth. I'll save the spreadsheet and close it. So right now it's 24 teeth. I click on the update and it updates to 30 teeth or whatever number of teeth that I select as long as it's a uh, within reason you know if I go too small a number of teeth um, that could be a, an issue but anyways uh, let's look at the sketch for that now so I'll edit that sketch and the first thing that you should notice is that this sketch is really simple really simple compared to the sketch on the previous example so keep your sketches simple pattern features rather than sketch elements if I come down here and I turn on the constraints we see that compared to the previous example there are relatively few constraints that need to be solved and um, there are going to be tangent constraints uh, between um, all of the relative uh, portions of geometry and uh, I just realized on the other ones so part of this geometry is mirrored I should have checked the tangents over on this side uh, because 
um, that's where the, the tangents were added on this one so I should have checked that on a previous example and I failed to do that uh, so I keep the sketches simple if I turn on the uh, degrees of freedom symbols we see that there are no degrees of freedom the sketch is fully constrained and it also tells us down here in the right hand corner that it's fully constrained if your sketches aren't fully constrained you might as well stop and uh, start asking questions to uh, determine why your why is it that your sketch is not fully defined now I added a couple of other things on there actually let's drag the end of part marker up so the first step was to extrude a simple uh, representative piece of that geometry so whenever you have repeated pattern geometry do the most simple form that you can and then pattern the feature rather than uh, pattern the sketch and actually when you pattern the feature let me go ahead and check this I'm going to edit that feature the, the I mean the, the pattern uh, let, let's edit that pattern I'll edit that feature and actually uh, it's usually better rather than selecting feature individual features uh, pattern the uh, solid body um, if you uh, you know if you're going to pattern uh, the entire uh, body and uh, if uh, that solves keeps you from having to select multiple features if you have multiple features to select in this case there was only one feature so uh, um, as far as computationally it made might have made no difference in this case to select body um, or feature and then I, I put a fillet on here now when I put the fillet cutting off the sides for some sprockets you might have a fillet and for some sprockets you might have a chamfer on there so I'm going to drag this down to the next step and the chamfer would be less material so I'll edit that feature I mean I'll make a bit I'll unsuppress it and it cuts a flat chamfer on there notice that that cut additional material away so I would logically put the chamfer after the fillet uh, so that if I wanted to chamfer cut I could um, I just cut that additional material away from the fillet cut if I did it in the opposite order, if I did the chamfer first, uh, the fillet would give me an error because it would no longer be able to find the correct edges. And in this case, I cut whatever uh, hub that I want uh, in the uh, center of the sprocket. So the keys, pattern, uh, features, or bodies. Pattern bodies in preference. Pattern, if you can't pattern body, pattern features. And usually only as a last resort, uh, in special circumstances sometimes you need to pattern a sketch element but in general you want to avoid a pattern of a sketch element let me show you one other example on that idea I'm going to edit this sketch and in reality let me turn off the uh, in reality this geometry over here is patterned or is a mirror image a mirror is really just a pattern it's it's mirrored over onto this side but I tend to avoid using the mirror command in a sketch what I would do is draw it over on the other side and then add symmetry uh, symmetric constraints between here and here and the center line um, that seems to be more robust less likely to uh, have an error than to uh, than to use mirror of the geometry uh, and also if something you know uh, there is an arc going from here to here but I would draw this as one continuous arc. Keep the number of elements uh, as small as as few number of elements as possible. So you could draw this as one arc, you know, mirror that onto the other side. But really, this is one continuous arc. So draw it as one continuous arc. Now this though has to be separate from this arc over here. So um, that is a symmetrical constraint between here and here in the center line. So those are some ideas to give you. Um, uh, a more robust uh, result that is less likely to um, le less likely to break on editing so you can go in and then make changes and you, you can be confident that your changes are uh, not going to uh, to break the part and so if we put this down to now I might actually break it here let's see because uh, 10 remember that hole in the middle of it the hole in the middle here that might be uh, too few of teeth for that hole because I didn't make the hole uh, a function of the number of teeth now if I'd made the hole a function of the number of teeth um, so that it would get smaller um, 
then that would would still work. So you got to consider those things. Um, I had just barely made uh, made that. So if I'd gone another two smaller, I probably would have got an error. So that would be a consideration that I would add to this is make the size of this circle and the size of this keyway a function of the number of teeth um, so that um, uh, you don't end up with an error condition. So those are some tips that um, you can use going forward in your design.